Credit is primarily a raster-based painting program, but it also has some vector capabilities as well. If you're new to digital painting, then you may not appreciate what the difference between these two words are, but I'll try to explain over the course of this video. To add a raster layer in Krita, you want to just press the plus button here, or press insert. Krita calls raster layers paint layers. To add a vector layer, it's shift insert, or you can press the downward arrow here and click on vector layer. All of the layers are in a stack here in the layers docker, and the stack is used to basically say what's on top of what. Before you select any tools on the left hand sidebar here, you want to make sure that you have the right layer selected. These tools will behave differently depending on what kind of layer you're using. For example, with a paint layer selected and the brush tool, I can start drawing or writing anything I want. But with a vector layer selected, the brush tool doesn't work and you get a little pop up in the top left telling you that something's gone wrong. If I want to draw or write in a vector layer, then I need to use the calligraphy tool instead. But the calligraphy tool is quite limited. <laughs> Besides the calligraphy tool, there is also the freehand path tool. And this will allow you to write using vectors. This will use your brush size, but it doesn't use any brush data. All brushes in Krita use raster layers or paint layers. For the most part, when using vectors, you're going to be using probably the Bezier tool. This will let you draw lines with handles that you can directly manipulate and create closed loops with. After you're happy with the shape that you've made, you can click on the Select Shapes tool and then click on the object. And from here, you can go into Tool Options. From here, you can change the thickness of the line by scrolling or by typing in a number. You can also change how the line appears, whether you want it to be dashed or dotted. And you can put arrows on the end caps. These arrows scale with the thickness of the line though, so they can look quite strange. You can also fill in the shape that you've made with a base color, if you like. All of these edits are reversible on a vector object, and if you double click on the object, you'll be able to see the tool handles that you created again. From here, you can edit them and move them around to change the shape after it's already been created. This is the sort of magic of vectors over rasters. If I were to draw a similar image using the Bezier tool again, but on the paint layer, so if we come and try to recreate the shape, it's drawn the shape using our brush, but now there's nothing to select. This applies to the other tools as well. So for example, if we use the box tool and draw a box in a vector layer, it will give us a vectorized box. And we can edit it in post as with the other one. If we take a raster layer and use the box tool, then we get a rasterized box. You'll notice that the rasterized box is going to use whatever brush you currently have selected. So if I use this felt pen styled brush and draw a box, it's going to look different from if I use a dry brush and draw a box. Vector objects don't have this capability. A quick tip if you're using a paint layer and you want to be able to draw straight lines quickly, then hold V and it will swap you over to the straight line tool. When you hold still for a moment, the image preview will sort of render. And if you want to lock it to a grid line, then hold shift. And this will force it into, I think these are 15 degree angles. The other thing you'll notice with a raster layer is that the further you zoom in, the more pixelated and blurry the image gets. Whereas with a vector image, although it does still get blurry, if you were to take the vector object and resize it, then it scales basically infinitely. 
If we do the same thing with the raster image and try to scale it up, you can see that it just gets even blurrier. The difference here is quite noticeable. This will of course depend on what resolution you draw the raster image at in the first place though. So vectors are fairly limited in what they can do in Critter. They still have their uses, but if you want a more substantial vector-based editing program, I'd recommend Inkscape, which is also free and open source. So whether you use a paint layer or a vector layer is really going to depend on your context and what you're trying to do. 